Welcome to another episode of the Design and Style Podcast. We are a podcast for designers, by designers. I am one of your co-hosts, Dixie, Dixie Willard Design. And with me, as always, is the beautiful, effervescent Rachel with Rachel Moriarty Interiors. And we wanted to say that the Design and Style Podcast is brought to you by the Visibility Lab. The Visibility Lab is the only membership group that focuses on the latest strategies and tools to help you get more visible while showcasing your specific brilliance. We've got weekly online office hours with both of us, monthly topics, in-depth worksheets, and exclusive monthly trainings. Today on the podcast, we have Barbara Viteri. Barbara Viteri is a self-made businesswoman with an unwavering entrepreneurial mindset. A native New Yorker raised in Brooklyn's most volatile housing projects, her education consisted of nurturing her grit, mastering her gut instincts, and being unapologetically authentic. In 2014, Barbara seized the opportunity to launch her brand, Designer Liberty. While creating a new media space, she partnered with the Design Network in 2014 to become the creator, executive producer, and host of a talk show called Designer Liberty Talk. It became the industry's first cutting-edge online talk show that captivated media attention. From being on multiple covers of magazines to contributing to online publications, the Designer Liberty brand got noticed. In October of 2016, Barbara launched DesignerLiberty.com. It was more than a passion project. In fact, it was a bold and unapologetic approach of building a brand on her terms. DesignerLiberty.com focuses on celebrity interior designer news, headlines, products, events, and exclusives. The online media platform is also known for its unique industry parties and unconventional panel discussions. Barbara is known in the industry as being uncomfortably real, but she would respond, I'm comfortable with that. I have to tell you, I love your TV spots. (laughs) You did this. (laughs) Dixie, oh my gosh. You did this one where you were on, it was the recent one that you you recorded, and you (laughs) Uh oh, what did I do? I think it was talking about your uh, what you're like. I don't know if you're starting a weight loss journey. Or oh my god, like that, that was fun. Yes, and I was she's... honest about that one. Yeah, I'm a fatty. Yeah, and she, but she said that I'm still getting it in with my husband. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> that was. Uh, oh my god, that was not even too long ago. Last month, um, life healthy lifestyle with Araldo was the show. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes. So when you get oh, to know me, I'm completely transparent, uh, you know, unapologetically authentic, uh, real. And, and that's the thing. I can't be filtered. So I, I basically went on the show to talk about design liberty. And then we were talking about living a healthy lifestyle. And I made a comment that I took offense to a BMI chart that said I was in, <laughs> basically I was obese. So I basically just told the doctor and the charts to go F yourself. I'm still getting it in with my husband. I don't know what you're talking about. I think I look pretty decent in clothes. But then you start to realize, oh, well, wait a minute. Now the physician's saying this chart is really just a gauge to say, if you're not going to start taking care of yourself, at some point you're going to start seeing things like high blood pressure and diabetes and heart disease. And I was like, okay, all right, let's, let's just start working off the pounds. So I have lost 16 pounds um, since doing that show. I'm at a total That's amazing. Screen. Yeah. So, I, you, you know, sometimes you need a reality check. Mm-hmm. Not all of us are going to look like Ashley Graham and cut those checks, you know, to be that size and go, yay, plus yeah. size. Yeah. Some of us have to be a little bit real. We have genetics that can cause us to kind of hit a health, you know, scare. Luckily, well, not me yet. But, you know, if I don't put the damn donut down, <laughs> it's going to get there soon. <laughs> at least think about it. Dixie and I like to talk about getting, we're getting ready to get ready, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Baby steps. <laughs> I love that because our group focuses, our podcast and our group focuses on visibility. And we are always talking about not just going on your social media and pitching all the time. Don't just pitch or, you know, sell, try to sell a service, sell a service, sell a service. Nobody resonates with that. Yeah. You know, and I love, so, you know, even though I pulled that out because it was funny, I think that people can still resonate with you. Yeah. I think we've all, you know, all of us have got a couple of LBs that we can, you know, use it, lose at any one time. Yeah. Uh, so it's, you know, it's actually a little bit deeper. It's, a, it's showing a whole other part of you that um, I totally appreciate because, Aww. you know, people just don't get real about that. I am pretty transparent and funny. But I think even if, you know, if obviously if you can't be this kind of silly, you know, crazy personality as a business, you should be able to see any opportunity 
that you can leverage without being an opportunist. There's a big difference. You know, like you, you really have to come across as it, looking at it as this is a great opportunity. And how am I going to leverage this opportunity where I don't become an opportunist? That's, that's like a big fine line with me. And having a Design Liberty brand on a healthy lifestyle show, you're like, how do you connect the two? But you know what, personally, I have, in, in my mind's eye, I know I have a weight issue. There are a lot of kind people, but I got real friends, which was really nice, where they're like, girl, you're at a point where you look like Pillsbury Doughboy. I just want to hear you laugh. Those are my people. I love those people because I give it right back because it's helpful. You kind of need those people in your life. But, you know, doing that type of show was great because I could also talk about, at the time, my, my business, Design Liberty, is about a year old. And I could talk about the growth of it, like, because it comes, becomes part of the conversation. So it doesn't always have to be like, oh, I have to, you know, get leveraged on the industry if editors at large isn't talking about me or if my, pro if my project's not an architectural digest, I'm a nobody. There is definitely room and areas of platforms that you can get yourself noticed. It just doesn't have to be in the usual vehicle that you think you need to ride in. The other thing that I think is fabulous about this whole conversation is Rachel and I hear all the time, oh, I'll get visible when I've lost Lose 20 weight. pounds or I'll get visible when I find the right clothes or that's Who's not saying that. Want. <laughs> no, oh my gosh. No, you don't understand. We have so many. So we just did a visibility challenge last week. And oh, I just joined group. the group. So I'm yeah, like, yeah. Yes. no, no <laughs> worries. So we did a visibility challenge and one of them is to show a picture of yourself or whatever, because so many people still have like, um, like a logo. logo, they hide behind their logo. They hide behind their uh, their laptop. You yeah, know, really now not putting what you're saying. themselves as the as the brand, because that, really that's what we are. Especially you, you are know, the brand. And I are solos, so we're we're mm -hmm. personal brands. You yeah. know, um. So a lot of our client, our our group members tell us that they they're too old, they're too young, they're too skinny they're too fat, they're too, you know, and it, there's all of these reasons why they are not showing up as I the think, face of their business. Well, let me go back a little bit to, to kind of tell you what Design Liberty is and then how yes. when people say yeah. all these things in their heads, how I could hopefully squash that basically. Oh, good. Yes. So Design of Liberty started off like 20 something years ago where I saw working for a high-end antique firm where when they meant to the trade, they meant to the trade. So you cannot walk through the door unless you were an interior designer. And I could shut the door in front of Sigourney Weaver's face, Tony Bennett's face, because if they didn't have a designer, they couldn't come in. So I coined the phrase designer liberty because I'm like, if the celebrity can't get in, the designer liberty is their access card to get in. So we have this whole industry where it blew my mind. That was 20 something years ago. Now you fast forward where we have this fun pop culture, almost influential. Like if you have a Kardashian with a, a lip kit, they're selling makeup, whether they're experiencing it or not, doesn't matter. But fashion does the same thing. Hollywood does the same thing. Interior design, I see it doing the same thing. And they are celebrities on TV, but they're also in my mind's eye designer celebrities. So when you see at that level, whether it's being on the television show or radio show or product line or whatever the case may be, they think just like a celebrity would, and they are not hiding. In order for them to push their brand, their market, they get an audience, they have to be up front and center. It doesn't matter what they look like. Plus, granted, the ones that really look good, like trust me, the photo I sent with you on fire, I said that was a team of seven. Look what I look like with a team of one right? <laughs> so I'm still going to go out and do my thing. But at some point you do want to kind of, you know, at one point you really want to be able to not go to a party and be like, oh my God, you look so different from your profile. Were you in an accident? Like, is everything okay? <laughs> like you want to resemble a little bit? <laughs> Were you, you in an accident? Far apart? <laughs> I've said that again, no filter. <laughs> like I'm just, I was like, damn, what happened? But the point is, is that when I created Design Celebrity and I started, you know, trademarking it and thinking about this industry and how I was going to get it out there so it could incorporate with pop culture and, and be on TV shows, I need designers to have more photos of themselves and their projects because whenever I do an editorial feature, their project can get on any platform. Sometimes they don't get credit for it, but you're going to get credit for your face. 
And that is what I love to put on, on the website. And that's what I love to be able to promote on television. It's this person, see this person. So I'm really in a weird sense, kind of pushing a movement to get designers to get the spotlight more on them. If you're doing a photo shoot for your project, take 10 minutes, spoosh yourself up, sit on the damn sofa, show a photo of you, like, you know, chopping the pillow. I don't want to see a fan out paint deck. I have a thing about that. It's so like designing women 80s. I don't. Oh my gosh. When I'm I over see it. those ones, I'm I like, no, it looks no like a fence who's done it. I Olin get Mills. it. It's like Olin Mills studio shot with the, you know, <laughs> They have the fan deck open and the fabrics and all that stuff laid and out. The I, home, in the Home Depot apron. I always say <laughs> if you can replicate, do what Architectural Digest does, but they put celebrities on it. You know, they usually have a nice family shot. I mean, we have Ricky Martin right now with his husband and his two beautiful oh. kids. There is nothing like having a designer in their own project. Be like a superhero. I don't care, but own it. Absolutely own it. And that's what I look forward to spotlighting. And TV is starting to catch on to this industry. Like, I'm able to go on television right now with a whole Hot Topic segment just on interior design. I'm not talking about Taylor Swift and what boyfriend she's with now. And I'm not talking about a DIY project, which I absolutely refuse because I don't have time for DIY. I'm able to talk about a book home trend movement, which is hilarious. I told you about this, right? We yeah. We're doing books backward facing. And people are, like, up in arms about it. And I get to sit on a really big platform going on Bella TV to talk about how, you know, look, just like we have, you know, fashion police, let's have a design police, you know, <laughs> let's have a design celebrity police. <laughs> Tell me your thoughts. Let's take a poll. Like we're fine. We're at, we're there. We're basically there. And I'm very proud to be part of it. That's so awesome. I love that. <laughs> So hopefully that'll help the ones that are like, I'm too old. I'm too this. I'm too that. I may continue to quote you on that one that you can't not get credit you can't. for your face. There's no way. And if they do, oh my goodness, I can't wait to clap on that. Right? I'm like the <laughs> Tegan of clapping back <laughs> when it comes to other people trying to take credit for your work. Like I've done mm-hmm. a whole shutdown. It's probably one of the reasons why I get blocked by some people. <laughs> But I look at it as a compliment when Donald Trump, you know, blocked Christy Teigen, at some point you're hitting home, you know, you're hitting truth, you know, and I don't think that we should allow some designers in the industry to take credit for other designers work and then build up. That's being an opportunist. Now you're really leveraging an opportunity. You may have worked for that interior designer and participated, but you cannot be the face of that project. Right. That, and that's a, a big straw on my back that, you know, it's just totally broken. And I've called out, you know, a lot of big wigs, you know, in the industry, like, don't we have a vetting system? You know, don't we have some sort of policies and procedures in place? And so when I'm doing something on designerliberty.com or if I'm going on TV, I vet and I, you know, and I don't have a bureau. It's not like a whole, you know, Superman, Lois Lane, you know, office. I would love to consider myself a journalist, but I have to vet because now this is going on NBC, ABC, huge networks. So I have to do my due diligence, but yeah. You cannot take credit for this. Own it. Enjoy it. Be proud of it. You put your work behind it. Put the face to it. I always say, it. you know, today is the best. I, I always have this thing about, I have this like little waddle. It's my family little waddle that we have oh, right here. Girl. But I've always, when I have those days where I'm like super self-conscious about it, I'm like, Rachel, it looks better today <laughs> than it ever will, you know? So you need to like not be self-conscious about it because in like five years ago you, five years from now you're gonna wish you had the one you had today you know be self-deprecating you know I, I yeah. did a, a Facebook live interview and I and I saw it moving you know my chin and it's so big it could have its own Facebook page right it really could and I know I see it you know but at some point you know we have options you know we, we could choose to do Botox or facelifts and all this stuff But if you're focusing so much on that and not focusing on, you know, you have a business, you have a brand, you want to get out there, people will get past all that. You know what I mean? You you look at some of the most successful models who are doing it. Iris Apfel, she has a, she's 90, I don't know, she's 128. I don't know what say. She's like 400. She's got a century <laughs> in there. She has a great partnership deal with yeah. the Shade Store, and she's doing her own commercials. And she Hunter goes Douglas. to Douglas. Oh, my God. Uh, it's Hunter Douglas. That's what it yeah. is. My yeah. father, Hunter Douglas. And I'm like, oh, my God. This is where we should look at. These are, like, the icons that we should look, you know, upwards to and, and sort of, you know, achieve that level of success. 
because beauty fades, you know, but at yeah. some point your work and your, your art is really going to speak for itself. And I'd rather look at it that way. I, I can't imagine doing a talk show again as much as I would love to, but you know, all of this, Oprah did it and Oprah's on a size two, you know, and Oprah's ethnic and I'm ethnic. So there are things that you can look at and just find the right people to, to sort of like use as your motivation for sure. You know, don't look in the wrong places. If I'm feeling bad, and I only give myself 24 hours to feel bad about something, because mm-hmm. that's, at that point, it's just a waste of time. You know, so yeah. I try to, I have a 24 hour limit. It's a choice. It's after 24 it hours, is. it's a choice. At that <laughs> point, call backup. It's time to call in SWAT. We need help. You know, <laughs> situation is not under control. And that's where I get my girlfriends who are just like, okay, let's snap out of this, you know, and, and move forward. I love that. I love you, Barbara Viteri. Aww. Already. Already. Yay. I think I'm going to get like a gold star or something at the end of this. <laughs> Cause I don't know if there's a rating <laughs> system. I told you, I don't go on a lot of things. I like to be on, I'm selective because I want to be able to enjoy myself. You know, I get very concerned if it's like, you know, you have to filter and you know, we don't want to offend anyone. I remember somebody saying something like, you know, it's a small industry and you don't want to burn bridges or, but at some point, you know, you got to be yourself. It's going to come out anyway. You know, the yeah. first impression is your impression. <laughs> so, yeah. So yeah. And that's actually the same thing that we talk about when we talk about being the face of your business and all the reasons why people want to hide. We're like, well, you don't hide when a client calls you and you're going to walk and show up at their front door. Right. You well, know you what I mean? To. So it's like, it's, it all ties in. Like you have to put yourself out there. There's as you are with it's whatever God gave anyway. you. Yeah, exactly. It's come out anyway. There will be a situation whether you're at a network meeting or you're on a panel. Like, here's the funny thing about this industry. It truly is like Hollywood. It is pure tinsel town. There are people who are phenomenal at faking and everyone absolutely loves them, you know? And then behind the scenes, you're like, oh gosh, she just has such a stick up her butt. You know, like, I don't know how she got you know, that, you know, magazine or, and I hear it all the time. And it's, and it's hilarious because I'm like, you're saying this, but you can't say it in front of that person's face, which I get, that's perfectly fine. But at some point when the consensus is true, it will end up on hot topics (laughs) because, you know, (laughs) that is my, that's my job right now at this point. And I'm not TMZ. It's just basically thinking what the public thinks because I'm not an interior designer. I'm coming from a perspective of the public. So what we have internally in the industry, yeah, if you know that person to be that, absolutely, you're not going to go and like put it on a bullhorn or whatever. But people will see that if they're on television, people will see that reflected in maybe some of the books that they come out. People are going to, there's going to be a reflection at some point. And there's nothing you can absolutely do about it because everyone is judging. This is the, the world that we're living in. You know, we have these reality shows and then you have people sitting on E or Entertainment Tonight and they are placing judgment or their opinion or whatever the case may be. So why go through all that work of trying to be someone else (laughs) when it's just going to come out anyway? Just stay true to who you are. I'd rather be the Bethany Franklin of the Real Housewives than work my butt off trying to be a Luann. Like, (laughs) I just rather, it's just easier. You know, you love me or you hate me, but at the end you respect me because there was just, you know, I I told you what you were going to get. (laughs) exactly we I mean we have recently um put out blog posts Rachel and I a couple of years ago now did a blog post each of us it just happened at the same time we did it together um talking about this is who I am yeah and I said on the design and style podcast or blog post it was the most liberating thing I have ever done because I didn't have to worry that somebody might think I was weird or whatever. I just said, look, I'm weird. This is <laughs> me. Called, called it out. <laughs> yeah. This is what you get when you're with me. Yeah. I'm sometimes weird. I, I hope you're weird like yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> and it's so funny because you get people who actually get along with you. Right. Your vibe How creates you your that tribe. Way? You've heard that saying, your vibe creates your tribe. Exactly. And you know, we have amazing designers that are phenomenal with one style, killing it. And then sometimes they want to venture out because they, they, you know, on a smaller scale, they don't want to lose on a project. If someone was really into country or if someone really, what they call transitional and they were like ultimate traditional, but here you are an ultra modern interior designer. 
And I always say not all money is good money. Because again, when that project is completed, and I've seen it a hundred times. I mean, I used to have a consulting firm. They didn't even want to promote it in magazines. They didn't even want to get it out there. And sometimes the client ran out of money and they couldn't even finish the project like with artwork or accessories or even like, you know, final upholstery or the husband was adamant about the ugly chair, whatever the case may be. And at some point, I think when you're running a business, you have to say, I just can't do this for you. You know, like you, you're going to look at it and say, this is something I won't even need to have them sign a contract if I can just say, you know, I'm, this is going to be promoted and pressed and put on my website and all this other stuff. And you have to be okay with that because you're seeing the opportunities come in on all the different platforms where you could talk about this project. So I want designers to be comfortable in their skin. Because whenever they send something to me and I'm like, well, you know what, this isn't really going to work on television. Quite honestly, I don't even think this is going to work, you know, for designlibrity.com. Send me something else that's coming in. You should have a tough enough skin where you're like, it's not working for you on Design Liberty, but it's going to work for like, you know, Country Gardens or, you know, something else magazine. You know, you have to be, be like a rap video, like Jay-Z, on to the next one. Sing the lyrics in your head, go hardcore, but yeah, it's business. It's just business. And so I think a lot of designers, they take their, it, it is art for you guys. You, you do take it personally, but if you could just look at it where we are right now on a designer liberty level, if you want that recognition, if you want to be noticed, whether it's on TV or a smaller scale with a blog, you know, sort of, you know, getting the word out there, you have to start thinking that way because once it's out there, just like with social media, everyone's watching. And, and that's a lot of pressure to put on yourself if you're trying to appease to everybody. You can't, and it's okay. It's absolutely okay. Your vibe will create your tribe. <laughs> um, I can't remember her name right now. I'll, I'll have to put it in the show notes, but there is a quote that I love that is, um, even if you are the ripest, juiciest peach in the entire world, there's going to be somebody out there who hates peaches. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so just one. be yourself and move along. <laughs> yeah, there's no, there's no qualms about it. Yeah. And I love, you know, I love, I love what I do. I'm not going to lie. Like I really, at one point I was a little apprehensive because I do have some great friends in this industry. Right. And then I, <laughs> I've been labeled like the white version of a Wendy Williams in the industry, <laughs> the Chelsea handler, like, but I look at those women like they're accomplished, you know, they do really well. So I never took offense to it. But on the flip side of it, like I got concerned where other designers will talk about other designers, right? And then they're like, well, you should, you should definitely write about that. You know, like, I, you know, I don't know how this person is, is getting a licensing deal or I don't know how this person's stuff is getting, you know, on covers of a magazine, you know? And then I'm like, why didn't you just call them up and ask? <laughs> like it, if you have so much to say about one person or here's the worst part, there are some designers that will take screenshots and say, oh my goodness, did you hear what they said about you? And I'm like, okay, well, when it goes public, I'll take it public and I'll handle that. It's not a big deal. But why didn't you say something? Mm -hmm. So the support is almost not there. It's just like Hollywood. It is, there is so much shade in this business. You could kill a tree. <laughs> you know, oh my God. It is <laughs> shady. But on the flip side, like I said, when your vibe creates your tribe, you have people who get what you're doing, like what you guys are doing, and you kind of want to create a really good, solid community, and you want to filter throughout all the BS and just take the bull by the horn. And that is where you can start finding your people, as I say. You know, you, you were looking for your people. And it's out there. Even though this industry is small, you could filter out through who you don't want to deal with because it's way too much energy to try to even, like, you know, manage all of that. And yeah. you just steer yourself to the people that get it. And there's so much more. There's yeah. so much more to it. So now I wheedle out through a lot. It good, took me a couple of years, but I wheedle out through a lot of the jealousy mm -hmm. or, you know, not being supportive. And now I have a great group of what I call Design Liberty Insiders that are like, oh my God, you know, this woman has done amazing work. She's, you know, in her 60s. She feels like it's past the point. And I'm like, I want to know who she is. If she's never gotten press, I'm going to put her in a section on, on Design Liberty and call it the potentials. People need to see that. the potentials of this work. It's incredible. And so that's what you do. That's, you know, what are you doing for others as opposed to what are you doing for yourself? 
I love that. I love the poten the whole theory behind the potentials on your website. Thanks. That I, that, so that's one of ones that's close to my heart. Oh my gosh. And when you talk about your vibe attracts your tribe in our community, it's all about high vibe, you know, because some of the groups can, like you said, can get shady, can get catty, can yeah. get, we're it's, like, that's not what we're about. That is, you know, and we're pretty vocal nothing. about it. What I think people don't realize is the jealousy, the envious, you know, all of that, not celebrating other people's accomplishments um, and good things that are happening, um, that will actually block and you want to hate on their game because you know who they are as you, from the interactions that you've had personally. Behind the scenes, yeah. Like behind the scenes. And the whole industry has sort of like, you know, their finger on the pulse of, oh, I know how that person got this. But when you're able to move on past that and maybe even not follow that person or maybe not even buy their stuff, I've never understood why designers want to get a licensing deal just to sell to the trade. Because right. you are blocking out yeah. <laughs> zillions yeah. of people going retail i've yeah. never understood that and now right. i'm like the the bad girl saying like that was a dumb idea i'm not gonna buy it if i don't like you or if i don't like the product right now it's like you know sitting on the shelves and licensing deal is like you know a big thing to designers mm -hmm. but when you can take it like if you look at a platform like design celebrity the potentials are for people who've never received press I know. which they're out there which blows my mind and people will or not people, but the industry can judge that as maybe it's just, you know, you're not worthy enough. Or flip side, when you're a solopreneur, you don't have a PR team and you don't have the time to toot your own horn. So maybe you have a few seconds to send me something. And I love seeing stuff like that because the people that are on the potentials, I'm looking for the guys, I'm looking for, you know, minorities, I'm looking for people with cultural background. I have never done a panel where you have not seen someone that was uh, cultural, that they had uh, a minority black, uh, background. I've had black Indians, but then I look at the panels <laughs> from certain major platforms and it is a sea of beige. And I'm like, aren't we promoting color in like multiple ways? <laughs> like what, is, what am I missing here? So that may turn off some people, but I'm already seeing that it's turning on others. And so now I can commentate on the platforms where I feel comfortable at. So now I can say these things on, you know, all these major networks and I can do all these things on my own platform or talk about them on other platforms because if you start separating yourself and trying to find your own supporters and your own crew and if you're creating that environment I'll feel comfortable being in that environment you know and then you flourish you actually the real you starts to come out and you start realizing what you want to tolerate and what you don't want to tolerate which is an amazing thing just like with in, in marriage you know how many times you hear someone say when they got a divorce I was in it too long right? Oh, yeah. You know, they try to stuck it out. They try to figure out ways to make it work, but they were really in that marriage way too long than they were supposed to be. And whatever the excuses may be, at some point you do hit a wall where you're like, enough is enough. And so even in business, you want to be a designer, you want to be a creative and, and you want people to embrace that. At some point you do grow up and you say enough is enough. I think my work deserves to be in such and such platform. I think that this should be something where I can get a licensing deal out of. I think this is great. I want to be able to have my own book, you know, and that is how a lot of designers who have that already had that thought. They, it's confidence. It's, you know, surrounding yourself with the right people. There is a process to it, but it's growing up and you're always evolving. So you're never going to be schooled and set and get your master's degree. No, you are always back in school, <laughs> sort of brushing up on how to do these things. I go through this all the time. You know, I, people are like, you should go and have that talk show again. It was really great. It was fun. I'm like, well, I'm kind of like on TV every week, you know, so I don't have to have the weekly talk show premise. Um, you know, same thing. You should have a product line. I, I was gifted. I don't know if you see the pillows behind me. This is a, a shop like a Design Liberty partner, and I'm going to promote her product on television. They were like, you should make that as like, you know, have merch, which is like a big thing right now. And you could sell all that stuff. Well, you know, that's something to think about. But I'm in that position, like, is this going to work? You know, do des our designers like, you know, interested in having something fun like this, you know? So you grow up and at some point you'll hit your mark. I'll hit my mark and decide if that's something I want to do. But that goes with everything in life. And I think designers now should really recognize there is this sort of pop culture, multimedia. People are interested in hearing about this world. 
you know, you're not going to have page six talk about the Joanna Gaines and Chip Gaines fixer upper and their fifth baby if they weren't major celebrities, right? Well, I'm bringing it even on the smaller scale. I hate to use the term like D-listers or, you know, Z-listers. That's not how I see it. But I'm like, there's a whole world that really is entertainment. And I think we need to share that with the mass public. I want to talk about like the home decor trend where books are being faced backwards. You know, are we going to embrace it? Is this going to be a cool thing? But it's relevant to the world of interior design, not like is the black dress over? You know, is it all about going to be shoulders or no shoulders? We can have similar conversations, but in the interior design industry. So that's what I'm bringing, you know, with Design Celebrity. And I'm talking about designers and I'm talking about, you know, shows that they're on and, you know, I'm talking about products that they should consider buying. But when it comes to the trade, I can't tell the mass public, you need to go to so-and-so to get so-and-so's product, you know? So I want them to think, or I want designers to really look at themselves as there is a celebrity world. We have reality TV, although it's 50 million flip or flop shows or fixer upper shows, but you know, in a sense, we have reality TV out there. Let's fight to get new ones out there. I'm doing it. I'm pitching almost every couple of months, you know, to TV networks and executives. You're like, let's do a show on this. No, nope, we're already seeing that. If I always refer back to HGTV because that seems to be some formula that they think if it's not broken, you know, no need to fix it. It's fine. Right. And I'm like, no, 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 no. It's broken. <laughs> it's broken because designers aren't watching it. And the mass public is not educated on it too much. So let's just try to do something else. <laughs> so you did a call out the other day where you were asking for some designers like you're are you doing your oh, featuring yes. stuff and yeah. I shared it in our group and one of my we just actually just got off of an interview with her Veronica Solomon reached out to you yes and yeah so she was so happy I'm so glad that you you guys connected oh, Veronica you gave me a plug thank you <laughs> <laughs> yeah she yes. did I, okay, so this is what I was saying, between pitching shows and stuff like that, even on a smaller scale with networks, they have segments, and segments can range anywhere from three to four minutes, and most of the time, networks are asking for, like, product presentation, um, and it's related to the home decor industry, which is fine, that's all great, but I was finally able to start convincing networks, and we're talking about, like, big networks, NBC, ABC, um, the, the one that I'm going to feature Veronica's work in is... Uh, uh, oh my God, I have so many. <laughs> Good Day Baltimore, it is. Okay, and that's uh, sometime in February. And they wanted, I, I said, listen, you know, we, we could go, I could bring in product and I could talk about how this is going to be great for your home and, you know, Pantone color of the year or whatever. But how about I show you images of actual designers? To me, they're designer celebrities because mm -hmm. they do have a backing, but the world may not know about them. Let me show you their work and I'm going to show you how they've made small spaces to become functional and appear larger. It's a conversation. It's not going to be an interview, but I think this is similar to when we see the Oscars and like, what did they wore? How did they wear it? Did it look good on this one? But not judgmental where I'm like going to be somebody that's like, I don't know. I don't think that's N anymore. You know, it's not that. It really is giving valid tips from a designer, not somebody who plays one on TV. Not to say that not all of them aren't designers, but from an actual designer. And so the network's like, yeah, let's try this. Let's, let's just, you know, have this kind of conversation. This seems interesting. And it's changing. The conversation is changing now. And, and next step for me is to actually get their faces up. Some of them don't even have profile pics, which is like, ooh, <laughs> you're killing me here. Please just take a photo of yourself, you know. But it would be great where we kind of have a fashion police moment where like, oh my God, this room that Nate Burkus designed uh, Ricky Martin's house. It's on Architectural Digest. Yes, Nate Burkus is a design celebrity. He's everywhere. But how cool would it be to almost have uh, an E! News moment or an Entertainment Tonight moment where we're actually sitting at a table talking about, oh, what he did here looks like it's going to be a trend, you know, coming in the summer. Or look at all the color tones or or I'm seeing globes and knots making a really big comeback. Bye-bye skulls, bye-bye, you know, uh, pinwheels. That's no longer going to be the home decor trend. There's entertainment in that. And uh -huh. then you have the work and the photos within itself. Look how dark and moody she made this office space, but it looks massive. It has an invisible desk. It feels cozy, yet it still feels refined. And I could just spruce it up and people are going to want to know, well, yeah, that looks like something I can do. That looks like 
who's this woman? Maybe I should follow her on, on Instagram. You know, like, this is pretty neat. How come I didn't know about it? You know, so that's the kind of thing I'm pushing Design Liberty to do within the industry. And also, to be honest, with, between mass public, between mass uh, media, which is, it's been a little bit of a sell, but it's getting there. I, although I put a lot of pressure on myself, Design Liberty technically is only a it's little. It's like a year old. old. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, why aren't you doing my taxes yet? I know you're a toddler, but get with it. <laughs> I'm always pushing ahead. I really am. <laughs> like you should We're the so same. Right. Dixie and I are the same because design and style is about a year. We just, we just, um, didn't we do what? I don't know what episode we are on, but we just did 52. We were doing one a week. Wow. Now we're moving to like. Now you're twice a week now. Two yeah. Two. So same thing. It's funny that first year feels, feels so long. long ago. Yeah. Oh it God. feels yeah. so much like good stuff happens in a year that you just, you couldn't have imagined. It's so no. unexpected, you know? So yeah, I totally get it. I, yeah. I, I, and it's funny because I look at Design Celebrity originally when it started with, I did the launch. Okay, this is a funny story. I'll make it quick. I did the launch for the website. I, I had a launch party and I was so convinced and I don't know what people's political views are, but to slow your roll before you try to, you know, clap back at me. I really was believing that Hillary Clinton was going to win. And, you know, again, it was a lack of options, but I wanted her to win considering, you know, what our options were. So I decided to have a party when the announcement was going to be out, who our president was going to be. Press at this party, everybody was like rocking back and forth. They were in fetal <gasps> positions, drinking up everything. Oh my God. And, and, and mind you, we did have some like that were happy, you know, with the choice or whatever. But timing was everything. So that was my launch party. But considering I thought, oh, this is a website that's going to be like grand opening, grand closing. If this is the premise where it start off of, where could it expand? <laughs> and yeah. in a year, I was able to push it to where now I'm doing TV corresponding on interior design TV corresponding because I'm very focused on that. And then expanding that to doing design celebrity events because like I was saying, I see all these panels and I'm like, I'm done with panels. I don't want to go to another event with talking heads. There's a place for that. But that's not Design Celebrity. We're going to have a Will and Grace premiere viewing party. And I'm going to get an ice luge the size of, like, my five-year-old, you know. <laughs> and I'm going to do, uh, you know, drinks. And I'm going to get candy pills. And, like, we're going to have a whole network party like this. And it was a huge hit. So for one year, all that work, it, it always evolves. And you should embrace that, which is a great mm -hmm. thing. And now that I'm a year in, now I'm like, okay, now what the, what's next? What am I going to start doing? Exactly. And come in and you know, now partnerships are coming in. And like I was telling you, merch is an option. So you just you gotta be happy and just keep following the wave and just go. I actually put out a bulletin. It wasn't just for um finding designers, you know, that I could spotlight on TV, but I'm looking for like a Jerry Maguire. I need an agent. I saw that. <laughs> yeah. I used Jerry Maguire's like a, yes. a, an image, I forgot what it was. And I'm looking for I and yeah, again, being unfiltered, I'm like, you need to outperform me. I was going to say, that's what I liked about it because you've gotten really far and you're a go-getter. So you need, yeah. you're like, I need me like 10X. 10, <laughs> X, you know, you have to be able to seal deals, you know, and, yeah. and I really believe like I didn't need a publicist. I do believe that a publicist cannot really do the work of an agent, but an agent totally can do the work of a publicist. You know, mm -hmm. I have a publicist, but I get four times more projects done or press meetings or press opportunities than this publicist can do. But, you know, at the same token, like, you know, that's also part of creating your, your tribe. I mean, how many times we've gone through a hire and it's just like, oh, you know, like, what's the drive? Where's the passion? And, you know, in order for this boat to go, you too have to pedal. You know, I'm, I can't just pedal all by myself here. So it's all part of that growth. I just love somebody with a point of view. I think that's what totally sets you apart is that whole, you know, unfiltered point of view. I love it. It's refreshing, to be honest. Oh, thank you. Well, like I said, you know, I'd rather have people look at Design Liberty to be like a Hollywood reporter than a TMZ. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it's, it's meant to really create this movement of putting a spotlight on celebrity interior designers. And celebrity, if you think in, in the world of pop culture, it doesn't mean you have to be the Nate Burkuses or the Joanna Gaines level, or, you know, even, you know, where we're watching with like fix, um, trading spaces is coming back and, you know, Queer Eye for the Straight Guy is coming back. It doesn't always have to be TV. There are some 
kick butt interior designers creating some amazing books. You know, uh, some of them have phenomenal product lines that are in the targets or in the ballad designs or or in, you know, Ethan Allen's. Like, ballad designs teamed up with Bunny Williams, teamed up with uh, Suzanne Kessler. I'll drop these names in front of my girlfriends and they're like, a who? Uh, you know, they don't know. And that's like one of those like, oh my God, you know, they're like this big and they're like amazing. And, but I can't believe we don't have a name recognition to that. Yet they know mm -hmm. Ballard Designs and love all their products. So I'm trying to equate that balance and show the celebrity side of it. Because there really are celebrities. In our world, you'll have people lined up to go to a Bunny Williams panel event, right? Mm -hmm. So it'd be kind of cool to be able to do the same thing from the public perspective. And that's what I'm hoping to really, like, you know, achieve. That is, that is the goal. My worst fear is not living my fullest potential. <laughs> like, not even getting it out there. Like, that's, like, my worst fear. Let me, let me just ask you one question because sure. I love the potential so much. Yay! <laughs> How does somebody get on your radar to be, like, do you look on Instagram? Do you, just because we have a group, you know, that focuses on visibility, how would somebody get on your radar? You well, know, not without, without pitching you, whatever, like just how does anybody get on? I don't on mind a pitch. I you don't, don't mind a pitch? Okay. I don't mind a pitch. Um, the, I think just like with everything, you know, um, first off, it'd be nice where people recognize that Design Celebrity is that brand because yeah. then you're not sort of feeling like, okay, is this going to work for this person? Is this going to work for this person? You already know what the brand consists of. It's spotlighting interior designers. And then honestly, it's just like what most people are doing anyway. You're pitching every single day. You know, you're, yeah. you're selling yourself every single day. So if you're looking at the website, you go to the email and you put in, you know, your subject, like, you know, will this project work for potentials or with it? And my website is pretty clear. I have designer liberty talk and I explain to you what design liberty talk consists of. I have the potentials. I explain to you what that consists of. And I have hot topics, which is a great place for announcements. It's a great place for exclusives because that's all I love to share. Wow. But I think that designers always feel a little self-conscious. Like, you know, I don't know if this is really a big enough announcement. Well, try it. D throw a dart. Something may stick. You know what I mean? Yeah. It doesn't hurt. Try. And not only just with design liberty, go for those big major shelter magazines, go for those TV shows, go for those, you know, uh, finding a publisher, it, go for it, just go for it. <laughs> it's not that difficult. And if you get shut down, so what? Go online, hear a song called On to the Next One by Jay-Z. Whether you love it or not, you'll get the message. You know, people are always going to try to shoot your ideas down. People are always going to try to say you're not good enough, or maybe they, they're, in, they're pretty much imposing their fears of themselves on you so it's best that you just ignore that noise like I was saying and get really comfortable with your own skin send me an email hit me up on Instagram Facebook is a little tough <laughs> but um, on design liberty I, I listen to I, I respond to all of my messages so just everyone's reachable they really are you know there's no way of getting about it you have like 16 17 different ways to get in contact with somebody with DMs PMs OMs I don't know any M's <laughs> You can get access <laughs> and just get out there and just share it. I love exclusive news. You know, I love hearing, but keep in mind, I'm talking to the public. So if you have a new line that's, you know, part of the trade and you're going to be at high point and you're going to have this party, how is the public going to have that? You know, how is the public going to receive that? It's almost like a private club. It just doesn't make sense. But if it's going to be shared, you know, in a store or if it's part of a smaller store. I love small shops. I promote small businesses all the time, you know, and sh announce that I'm opening up a store. That's, that's something that people should know about. You know, I'm having a launch party for it. Small, if you're having a launch party, if I had a launch party on the day that Trump became president, there is no excuse why you can't admit that you only had two people show up at your launch party, but trust me, you're going to love this place. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that's got to set some bar, you know, get the word out there. Don't think you're too small. You're only too small when you think you're too small, get the word out there. And I'll let you know if I could do it or if I can't, or better yet, when I say that I can't do it right now, I always end it with girl, please send me something else or honey, please send me something else. I love you. Please send it in. Just keep sending it in. There's a place for everything. And I think that's the perfect, that's perfect. place. Oh my gosh. Don't, I love just like, don't think you're too small. I think that is like the best place oh, to end it right there. That is so fabulous. Awesome. Thank you so much.
No, thank you guys for having me. And you know, I'm, I'm going to do tomorrow um, wine, design, wine and design. Wine and design, yes. yes. Which will be fun. And I'm on Bella TV on Thursday. So you can kind of see the freak in action. If you're like, I don't know about this girl. I'm not, I don't know if I'm going to bring my stuff over to her. At least you can get a bit of a tasting of it <laughs> this week. But yes, That's I look awesome. forward to, to hearing from everyone. She was so much fun. Oh my gosh. Can you believe we were just chatting with the designer liberty? The I, designer liberty? Makes Barbara me feel Vitelli. like a designer liberty. I know, me too. She is so real, so refreshing mm -hmm. to talk to her. I had no idea what to expect. I've been following her for a while. And so I was like, what? This is going to be interesting. And she was awesome. She was so she, fun. So it's, like being, it's like being in the middle of just a really cool whirlwind. I loved I it. I know she's got so much going on. So we definitely want everyone to head over to her website, designaleverty.com. Check her out. She's mm -hmm. got, I mean, she, she named some big networks. She's going to be on like ABC, NBC, and you know, good, good day this and mm -hmm. good day that, you know, mm -hmm. so definitely one to keep your eye on. She will be the one if you want, if you're like way into interior design, um, you know, stuff, hot topics. <laughs> That's the place. That's where you got to go. Heck yeah. So if you have any questions or want all of the links to all of the things, you can head over to designingstylepodcast.com and we will have all of the info in the show notes. Yes. Bye. This podcast was made possible in part through the support of our preferred partners, like the Design Network. The Design Network offers one of the most powerful to-the-trade e-commerce programs in the furniture industry, combining the top brands in furniture, the best prices, and unparalleled logistics all in one place. Go to www.thedesignnetwork.com to join the Design Network's Trade Direct program, create your designer profile, connect with new clients, and start shopping today.